Hi, Jeff Spira here again, and today I'm going to talk to you about inboards, uh, inboard outboards, or stern drives, outboards, and well mounts, and transom mounts, and, and uh, different other features like jack plates and things on boats. So, um, hope you find this of interest and uh, can help you with your design. So. You know, I get asked all the time, should I use an inboard or an outboard? You know, what about stern drives? You know, IOs, you know, what, what, what about those? So, and most of these, mostly these days, I design my boats around outboard engines. So, they're the easiest to do. Um, they're the most convenient. And these days, you know, they're some of the more reliable motors out there. Um, this didn't used to always be so, though. Um, I kind of soured on outboards back when my... Uh, Father bought an 18-foot Glen L design, uh, and it had a Johnson Seahorse 50 on it, which was a four, V4 uh, outboard, and um, um, that motor was, was a real piece of garbage, in my opinion. Um, it was very difficult to start, even if you cleaned the plugs regularly, and, uh, and I, you know, I remember pulling that thing hundreds of times out in the ocean, you know, when it broke down, and... and uh, Gosh, cursing all the way with it. It was it was a tough motor to run. So we used to take it uh, ocean fishing out in the La Jolla kelp beds um, off the shore of San Diego. And uh, um, anyway, had a lot of difficulty with it. And I kind of ignored outboards after that. I wanted no part of them. So, um, but later I went to went to college and had a friend with a, a 13 foot Boston Whaler. And he had a 65-horse Mercury on it, which was a big engine for that boat. It would go 50-ish miles an hour, something like that. He used it a lot for water skiing, and I kind of I kind of taught him how to how to use a boat in the ocean. So um, this was out of Morro Bay, so we, we spent a lot of time uh, uh, going out in his boat. So um, th and his motor really kind of changed my mind because it was new. It was a it was a new Mercury. Mine was. I don't know, 15 years old and had been kind of abused so, um, on the, on the, uh, the Johnson Seahorse. And so, uh, you know, the, the difference in those two motors was, was astounding. So, you know, I, I kind of decided uh, Mercruiser was a much better most motor than Johnson or Evinrude. Johnson's and Evinrude's were the same motors, I think, back then. So, um, at that time, I was working with uh, a person who was building Radden Craft, and um, they had uh, Mercruiser stern drives in them. But these were IOs typically. They had they typically had a, a you know the the uh, um, the twenty four to twenty seven footers tw twenty four by eight to twenty seven by tens had uh, six cylinder uh, and Mercruiser uh, stern drives in them. And um, uh, that builder also built one for himself, and it was a, a 32 foot, 32 by 12, I think, um, Radden boat. It was a very heavy boat, and, it, and these were glassed inside and out with very thick um, uh, glass over half inch ply. And uh, anyway, he had uh, he had uh, two 454 V8 Mercruisers in, in the transom of his. And um, it was a big, powerful boat, but uh, boy, did it burn gas. I think it was burning like 60 gallons an hour. I remember going out to, uh, we used to go out uh, and to the local uh, uh, offshore banks. He was an ab diver and, a, and an urchin diver and stuff. So um, that was back in 1973 when gas went from, you know, 20, 24 cents a gallon to, if you bought over 100 gallons, I think, to, uh, to 60, 65 cents a gallon or something. So it was, you know, he was, it was costing him, you know, $300 an hour to run that thing. So he, his gas cost tripled or something. So uh, um, that's when he, uh, you know, that was back when you could buy a new car for three or $4,000. So he swapped those gas engines out for a couple of diesels, though. So that, that uh, made a difference and he ran diesels off his... Uh, existing uh, stern drives so uh, i think they were uh, i think they were early yanmars um, four-cylinder diesels and and instead of going you know 
35 miles an hour out there. He, he, he could only go maybe 18 or 20, but, uh, but, you know, he went from 60 gallons an hour down to, you know, eight or something, <laughs> something re amazingly, uh, much more economical than the, uh, the original design. So at that time I had a, a commercial fishing boat. It was a, it was a 36 foot uh, troller basically that I trolled and I also uh, fish rock cod, deep water uh, fish rock cod. So, um, and it had a uh, 3 371 GMC diesel. It was about 55 horses. And um, it had been underwater and I kind of cleaned the whole thing out and, um, and uh, got it running. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a good, reliable motor. You know, it, it only burned about two gallons an hour and we'd get about seven and a half knots or so at, at the cruise speed. Uh, we go about oh, pretty close to nine, eight or nine knots uh, um, when it was uh, full out. But uh, I ran it at, I don't, I don't remember, 1300 RPM, 1350, something like that. And it would get about seven, seven knots or so. Um, it had 700 gallon c tank capacity aboard. So, it, you know, it could go 5,000 miles, something like that. It could cross the Pacific with a single tank of gas, you know. <laughs> I, uh, I I used to fill it up. I mean, I'd fill it up with the center tank only. I never used this two side tanks, but I'd fill the center tank. Uh, um, it was every once per season. I go out and you know fish trolling for albacore. So they'd, you know, I'd be hundred miles offshore and uh, you know uh, for a week at a time. You know, through through th two or three months, and uh, and and it would only it would only burn enough to half drain the center tank and, and the two the two 150 gallon side tanks you know never got touched so um anyway these days you know outboards have gotten a lot better uh than um than they were back in my day with the with the johnson you know after the japanese versions came out um the you know honda yamaha kawasaki tohatsu you know they, they all came out with uh with outboards that uh, uh, were a lot more reliable than the American ones. And of course, you know, Mercury and Evinrude uh, have in, had followed suit and they came up with much more reliable outboards as well. So they, uh, they, they really improved things over the, uh, over the traditional uh, designs that, that we made in the U S. So um, that was a, that was a good injection into outboard, reliability that you didn't have before. So Japanese diesels, of course, came out uh, about that time, the early 70s. And I, and I had, uh, had a number of, uh, of uh, people that I commercial fish with that, and, and that switched over to Yanmar diesels back then. Um, one of my friends pulled a, a six and a half, six horse one lunger uh, out of a sailboat that had sunk outside of Morro Bay. And, and it was a Yanmar, and um, uh, we got it up and running again. And we were planning to build a 25 uh, foot, you know, 25 by eight uh, power boat that would uh, burn a quarter gallon an hour. You know, maybe move five and a half, six knots, and uh, uh, you'd be able to you'd be able to really cruise with it for almost no fuel consumption. So that would uh, I was thinking about building it and heading down the Pacific coast to the canal and cut through and, uh, you know, explore the Caribbean with it. <laughs> you could do it awfully cheaply back then, but, um, never happened, but, uh, that, that cause that diesel never, I, I don't know what happened to it, but, uh, my, my friend took it uh, away somewhere. And, uh, but those Yanmar single cylinder diesels are still available. They're used as, uh, auxiliaries on sailboats. So, um, but for most of my boats, I would actually recommend outboards. You know, again, they're relatively inexpensive. They're available. They're easy to mount. Very reliable. You know, you know. Classically, I suggest that you use transom mounts, which is a cutout in the transom that is reinforced to hang the motor on. It works out great. You know, um, on some of my boats, uh, I design uh, for options for motor wells and. Uh, Here's a, some examples of a couple of them. Um, here's a Carolinian with a motor well. You can see how the motor sits inside there. And a Carolinian with a transom mount. 
Um, here's a key Largo with a transom mount, and uh, here's another one with a motor well. Now, typically, I only include these options on the um, Carol Carolina dories because they were they were traditionally made that way, and some people like them. Um, they, some people think this was done to improve performance or, or you know, help with following seas when you know when waves come up, sneak up behind you. Uh, you're headed downwind, for instance. So, but the real reason that that wells were invented for these boats was to keep, you know, fishing nets from getting tangled up in the prop or when you hauled them back over the side. So it doesn't get fouled up with the motor. So it doesn't perform any better um, and it doesn't uh, stop the following seas from swamping the boat, you know. Um, it only gets it out of the way from nets. So if you're going to fish with, with uh, nets and pull them over the transom, then, you know, a well would be a good idea. Now, I've had a few people do that, and I, in fact, I had a builder build a um, an Albion, which is a Pacific power dory with with a well. I don't design it as an option, um, but he set up his own. Um, just basically, I, I showed him how I do it on the uh, on the um, Carolinian dories, and he he followed that rule. But he was also fishing with a lot of um, with um, uh, skim nets for for uh, a shrimp. They, he skimmed shrimp down in, uh, in southern uh, Alabama and Louisiana. So he had nets over the transom and he needed some place to pull them up and not get it, get messed with the motor. So um, that's why he went that way. So, so if you want to uh, improve the downwind or following sea performance, you should really build a splash well. Now I I designed the splash well into some of my offshore boats, like if you were to buy an um, Anacapa, which is a 19-foot offshore Pacific power dory, it comes with a standard uh, splash well designed in. Um, people have built splash wells on all of my designs, though. You can build them if you wish, and you don't need to build them if you don't want to. So for your typical... Uh, you know, Carolina Dory or, or even Pacific Power Dory, if you don't want to build a splash well, it's perfectly fine. Uh, it may, makes it simpler. Um, and, uh, um, you know, it, it, with a splash well, any water that comes through the slot, you know, from a following sea, will, will just, uh, you know, hit the well and then, and then drain back out. So it won't, it won't come and, and fill your bilges. Uh, whereas if, if it's just got a slot there, it will, it'll go in the bilges and you'll need to either pump it out or, or if you have a self bailing deck, it'll just, it'll drain out through the deck scuppers. So that, that's how it'll work. Um, you know, if you aren't out in rough water though, it's, it's, it's a complex thing to build and maintain and, you know, that sort of thing. So I, there's really no need for it. You're not, you're not, if you go out on a lake where blowing 15 miles an hour and you get a, a little bit of choppy water, you know, that people tell me, oh yeah, it really gets rough here on this lake. Well, no, it doesn't. Uh, or, or, or this river or whatever. It typically, you know, it, it can be, it can be what you think is choppy, but that's not the kind of thing that's, this is going to stop. So, um, if you use your boats in one of the, you know, the larger bays in the east, um, or south, south, southern part of the U.S., or the Great Lakes or the ocean, you know, you, you're going to, you, you would probably, you may be interested in a splash well, particularly if it's unpredictable when you'll be out on the water. So, um, you know, if you want to mount the um, outboard on the transom or, or in the aft section of the boat there and uh, want a full size height transom, you could also use a jack plate. Um, they're available. Um, I, I have, um, uh, some sketches for home built ones, but they would be the smaller manually adjustable ones, or you can buy those. You can buy them either way. Um, there's simple manual adjustments or there's fancy big hydraulic jack plates that'll raise the motor up and down and, and give you, um, uh, all kinds of adjustments and it'll be actually outside the hull. So, motor at all times so so that you don't have to worry about water splashing on it you know I've, I've got some links down below of these jack plates that I'm showing in these pictures so so you can uh, 
take a look at the features they have and see if that's appropriate for uh, for your boat's design. So, if you wanted to use a jack plate, send me an email um, and I'll show you how you can modify your transom to accept the the mounting of the of the uh, jack plate. So it's it's reinforced appropriately to do that. It's it, it takes a little beefing up of your transom to make sure that uh, that all happens appropriately. So. If you decide to use a, um, an I.O. or a stern drive, um, which is, of course, an internal engine like an auto engine, and, um, and then an out, out drive, which is like, like an outboard motor, so that steers back and forth and has the gears built into it and that all, um, you can build those into my boats as well, and, and I'll send you... Uh, uh, well, or, or you, you go on online and you can pick up a cutout uh, for for what um, for what shaped hole you need to put in the transom, and then how to go about. Uh, and I'll teach you how to go about uh, setting up uh, motor mounts in, inside your boat to attach the motor, so that uh, the I/O is uh, can mount on your on your stern and give you this uh, stern drive feature which is, you know, a good way to do so. Um, anyway, um, next uh, are inboards. And as I mentioned before, um, that's typically a straight shaft. And, uh, or a lot of times the, the, uh, the, the stern drive, or I'm sorry, the uh, inboard um, transmission has a seven degree down angle of the, of the shaft. So, Typically, the, the shafts go seven degrees through the bottom of the boat. Now, if the boat's flat, that seven degrees is through the bottom. But if the if the bottom is curved and you're going through a curved section, it'll it'll add or subtract from that uh, from that seven degrees that you uh, that you're going through. So they make they make packing glands that um, uh, you know. W where the shaft goes through the boat at, at uh, either vertical or angled different dimensions. And, uh, you know, I'll help you pick those out as well if you decide you want to go with an inboard. So um, I have a report on how to go about uh, installing inboards. Um, if you, if you uh, ask me for it, I'll, I'll be happy to send it to you. So um, I've had people put uh, these some of these motors like uh, this 15 horsepower uh, air-cooled diesel, which is a Chinese diesel that you can buy on Alibaba or something like that. Now you can't bring that kind of motor into the U.S. because it's not legal to put in, and I'm, I'm sure it's not in Australia or in England or or um, New Zealand or you know most most uh, modern Western countries with with uh, anti-pollution laws because um, they don't meet the uh, the output requirements of you know low low emissions so um, that wouldn't wouldn't be a wise idea to decide to do that but one of the things you can do in the U.S. or some of these other countries Canada. Um, is to use an older uh, boat motor, one that's that's been in use. Now a lot of these you can buy. They're um, like, uh, for instance, um, um, sailboat uh, power, you know, motors that 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 came out of sailboats, you know, diesel engines and things like that, that have come out of older sailboats um, that maybe weren't used much or they were used, you know, very very lightly. And um, and they can be you know rebuilt or at least you know uh, cleaned up and repaired enough to be a, a viable drive for for many of these boats, and they're available pretty inexpensively. Um, if they've been they've been in a boat before, then then you can continue to use them, including on newly built you know home built boats. So um they're, they're they're available if you look on ebay there there are a lot of them available there's other places online where you can find uh you can find smaller diesel engines that were uh that were taken out of boats or or perhaps uh people took them out of a boat and decided to upgrade the motor in their boat you know they you know if they're making improvements or whatever so um or if it started running rough or or something they maybe replaced it with a newer one and and you can overhaul the old one um, 
inexpensively. So, but you need to check the state requirements on motors. Um, one of the great places to get them is, I think, is um, is out of uh, um, lifeboats. Lifeboats have small single cylinder, typically like uh, MOOC engines and things like that. Eight horse single cylinder MOOC engines and you know motors like that and. Uh, Lifeboats never run. I mean, they're, they're run for maintenance and that's it. So they start them up and make sure everything's running right and they're well lubricated and well maintained, ready to go. But but they don't, the only time they ever use is in an emergency. So, um, you know, ships go through their whole lives without having emergencies. And offshore drilling rigs as well, they have lifeboats on them. So um, if you can find an older lifeboat or one that was recently upgraded or something, um, the engines in those are you know, pretty good motors. You know. If you take an eight horse book and put it in like a 27 foot St. Pierre Dory, you would have an awesome offshore um, cruising machine, you know, that would, uh, that would be, that would be willing to cover, you know, cross the ocean if you wish. Uh, it'd be, it'd be a, a substantial cruiser or, or a looper or something like that. Um, great way to go there. So, Okay, well, that's um, pretty much what I have on um, on inboards and outboards and wells and that sort of thing. So if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments section. And we'll talk to you again soon. Just to remind you, uh, the various devices that I showed here, um, you'll be able to find right down below. I've given you links to find them on Amazon uh, if you would like. Also, please do subscribe to this uh, uh, YouTube channel and, um, and hit the bell so that you get notified of new uh, videos that are posted. Um, if you're interested in any of my boats, uh, please go by my website uh, and it's got uh, um, lots of great stuff on there. Uh, it also has an insider section where I've got additional uh, information and, and you can freely download the uh, manuals that I talk about and such. Um, and uh, um, all, it, all it takes is you joining and putting in your email address. So I have a way to get a hold of you. Um, but please, please do that. And again, thank you very much for watching.